Hey guys, um, so you probably are involved in some frustration whether or not you're going to want to call the repairman um, and you have an F21 code on your Whirlpool Duet. Um, I'm here to say if you have an F21, most likely is a clogged filter, which is housed in your pump. Um, we're going to walk you through step-by-step -step every process. Um, there's a lot of videos out there. Whirlpool Duet probably do it better than me, but I am going to show you a couple of different ways to do it. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but there's a black hose in there, guys, that is brutal. Um, you're going to want to, you know, watch this video just because of that black hose. It's probably the thing that's going to get you the most. Um, so... I think what we're going to try to do is going to walk you through the main piece of once the unit's actually been broken down, um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through as much as I can. Okay, so like I said, uh, make sure you unplug the unit. That's a very, very important pl uh, plug that unit. I'm going to probably say that about three or more times. Turn off the uh, hot and cold, turn them off. Um, obviously, I'm, I've already kind of got this thing running again, but I'm going to go backwards here. You're going to disconnect this with your grommet. This is something that you're going to want to use, I'm sorry, get used to because you're going to use a lot of these. Um, the unit comes with all these things, but you want to make sure that you either take pictures of everything you take apart, or um, I always use my phone to take a, take a picture of it so it kind of Whatever the design was, you want to clean this part as best you can and use a little brush or something, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, this is actually the drain that goes into the unit, but this is also the unit, the drain that goes out to that. You can, you can do all different kinds of things with this as far as cleaning it. I always, as a matter of fact, I'm actually pretty diligent about this because this will get kind of swampy smelling. And again, that's not because I'm gross. It's just if you got a family, I got a big family, and they play sports, it's going to wear out your, your, uh, your, thing, your uh, washing machine. All right, so there are, you want to get underneath the hood here. Like I said, I use vice grips for these, for these like adjustable pinch clamp thing, grommet, whatever they're called. And then I've, this is, this is, I, I don't even know what, what the, what socket it is, but it's pretty simple. I've been inside my dryer and my, and my uh, washer so many times, I don't even know. It's, it's like permanently, I, this is like the tool I use for everything. Uh, just for this whole thing. You're gonna have three screws. One, two, and three. Kind of loosened them for you guys. Um, but that's how you get everything. Once this thing's open, you just literally just, it. you can literally just kind of grab the back of it and go poop, and it'll pop right out. And then that'll give you access to where the drain hose is, and the drain hose is right here. We'll show you that a little bit later. Okay. So, like I said, F21 up there, um, it's going to be flashing yellow, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, yellow or green, depending on what unit you have. Mine's 11 years old. Whirlpool Duet, front loader, talk about that a lot. This, you probably have water in here. You're going to want to suck that out with the shop back. But you also have to get to the front here, once you've done all that, three screws. One two, three, and then this thing just basically just pops right out. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys can pop that sucker out, it kind of comes out.
Okay, so the photos, I think, do a better opportunity uh, of showing exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, you guys know what's going on, probably, since you've either been Googling or you've been looking, but I wanted to show you the um, Whirlpool Duet uh, pump and the, actually, housing and the metal, basically, plastic. I got a new one, uh, which I'll show you in pictures as well, for about $28 on Amazon, so it's the only way you're gonna find them. But what you actually wanna look for is if you, this was actually attached, you'd actually reach inside here to this hole and you'd actually feel inside and you would see if this thing was actually um, spinning and or moving well. This one, of course, mine completely broke and you can actually see how it actually wore itself down and actually converted down into, um, actually spinning almost into a um, uh, grinding nature or sand in it. The entire pump itself, which is actually magnetized. Um, can't really do this with the camera, but it actually pulls out and is magnetized. You gotta be careful with your cell phone because it is a pretty powerful magnet and it actually lifts out and this is actually completely broken. This is an F21 on your Whirlpool Duet. Uh, code, the actual, the actual uh, magnet itself is, like I said, very powerful. Um, there is a smell that you might have smelled while you were um, trying to utilize the machine itself. Um, the smell is very acrid and almost metallic, but also has almost a burnt hair smell to it. That is because in this catch basin here, which I'll show you in another video, is actually screwed onto the unit, which is where it is, and you actually, all of the materials, coins, um, hair, anything that's caught in there. As a matter of fact, in the black hose that actually connects to the back of it, you actually have to check that as well, which is a complete and utter nightmare to try to get um, uh, off of the unit and then back on because of the clamps and things of this nature. So, um, this is the old unit. Uh, the next video is going to show basically the new unit going back in. I'll try to spare you guys uh, some of the, the things that are uh, monotonous, but uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, guys. Um, so we're going to do an F21. So F21 is up there. I, of course, unplugged the unit and turned off the hot and cold water. Always do that. So we're actually a step behind as far as showing you, but F21 for a Whirlpool Duet uh, Tumble Fresh uh, front load unit. And um, F21, of course, is the, uh, <clears throat> the pump and or there is a blockage in here. I'm gonna show you what that looks like inside and or the pump is bad. This is the actual drain pump itself. Um, as far as the what it looks like inside, um, I'm gonna show you just kind of really quickly what it looks like. Um, this is a seal, folks. So this is this is the brand new one, so I've already done it. I've already done this one, but I just wanted to show you what we actually were doing. So this actually comes off. There is copious amounts of water in here, guys. When I mean copious, I mean you're going to want to have a shop back ready. All right, shop back. I put down towels, towels down below here, okay? This is what the catch basin looks like for the coins and hair, and I found about 11 years worth of sand from my son's baseball in there, so. Um, but that's in. You're going to use a pliers, most likely, to get this thing open. I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what it looked like, okay? This is, again, it's a seal. What I mean by seal is, is that it is tight, okay? And right now, it is brand stinking new, so it should be good to go. Um, yours is most likely gonna be under pressure. Well, there's not most likely, so you're gonna wanna use any kind of pliers, okay, pliers, and you're gonna do it like this. Not clamping down on it, but just using the prongs like that, and you turn it like that way. They have to meet, these notches have to meet. Okay, so you either don't go too far, don't go to anywhere else, okay? Um, as far as the, 
unit itself. Um, it, I have pictures of it and I will show it to you how bad it looks. And I actually pulled it apart in this video as well. So you guys can learn as you go. Uh, as far as the, the ease of this, um, it is relatively easy as long as you have um, something that I think is why you should watch this video is I use um, waterproof grease, okay? And this is plumber grade and it is a lifesaver, especially if you are utilizing um, any kind of rubber and this is in the winter. The rubber is very dry and the plastic gets very dry as well. And I've taken all the water that comes out of this and oh, it's into the, into the, um, um, good grief, the uh, shop vac. And then, so it's probably got about this much water in it from the drum itself. So the drum itself is of course empty because I've emptied it, but I sucked out all the water out of the drum because the F21 was showing that the drum was unable to drain. So the drain pump itself was the problem. My impeller shot, which is in here. So when, I guess I should have showed you guys from the beginning, but you reach your, your fingers into, there's a hole in there. You reach your finger in there. If you can play with the propeller or if it spins, then most likely, you know, you're okay. But if it spins like almost like it's hard because it's all magnets in here. So the actual magnets itself um, are where you're um, dealing with. Mine was completely full of water and sand and soot and terrible stuff. So that's what it is. So this actual unit is easy enough. So you actually will declamp this right here. You'll declamp this. And then um, I always pinch these off because that way you can actually get these to, this to actually just pinch off. And then you just pinch these off as well. So it's just a, a simple pinch, just a simple pinch here. Um, always ensuring that you're not pulling on this if your unit has this. I've seen some that don't have it. Uh, looking at control board, also any any um, water leakage down here is going to be pretty uh, normal. So I always take, I have towels upon towels upon towels, you know, that I've used. But the shop vac is an absolute necessity. And you just kind of sit the shop vac hose as you slowly dial this. Slowly dial this open, you turn on the shop vac and you suck the water out just like that. Okay, you just basically sit there like this until there's enough, otherwise, it is going to run out. I've seen some videos where they have a cup, some videos have they have a whole catch basin. I've never done it without the shop vac, and I don't want to try. So, um, that's kind of the way it is as far as releasing it. These all come off pretty simply. Um, again, mine has a, a pinch clamp here. This is actually kind of a almost a adjustable grommet or an adjustable clamp as well. And then, of course, the most difficult thing we're going to be dealing with is this up in here, as far as the uh, the black hoses, can, uh, because of the clamp itself. The clamp itself is going to be. It actually comes off relatively easy, which I was shocked when it did. But getting it back on there is difficult, folks. So we will probably be spending the majority of our time messing with the black hose. All of the, um, the folks that have done this show that the black hose goes on very easily. I'm here to tell you that's your hard part. So have pliers that are worth something because this is my father-in-law's and it is absolutely uh, a necessity. That way you can get a wide, um, grip onto those adjustable clamps. So we're going to go ahead and get started, folks. I'm going to start break, breaking this whole thing down and um, we can see how bad it looks inside as far as uh, everything. When I break it down, I'm actually going to pull this out because it's easier to pull all the clamps off once you've undone this before. That way you can kind of almost get it out of the unit uh, rather than trying to pull your put your hands all the way into here. So actually you're going to and you move this to the left. There's actually a seating. There's actually almost a, uh, it's a black seating here and it's three little prongs, uh, or actually it's two main prongs and then one over here and it actually moves that way. So it moves to the left. So you're gonna kind of move it, but you're gonna have to unseat this with a screwdriver. So 
I'll kind of put the screwdriver on here. And you can kind of see what it looks like underneath there. I gotta be careful with this, folks. Again, this is my new unit, so I don't really want to pull it off because I've already done it. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of uh, waterproof uh, grease just to kind of keep things moving. Uh, and always when you have the new one, you know, or the old one, you'll actually feel it's very, very secure. I mean, it does have a little bit of wobble as it, but the entire drum has a wobble as well because it actually sits on a, on a uh, hydraulics. So um, that's kind of where we're at, folks. And we're going to go ahead and see what that hole looks like. I have an old catch basin, which is what the old unit looked like as far as what it looked like. I've gone ahead and cleaned mine out. It was disgusting. There is a smell associated with this, but as you can see, that kind of, it just, it, it fits like this, and then it actually pulls out. This is probably where your F21 is most likely going to be. Your F21, so you'll have coins, and you'll have hair, and you'll have all kinds of stuff that's sitting in there. Uh, it's it's separated, so it can kind of, kind of catch more stuff, but also will let water escape. Um, my, mine, unfortunately, wasn't just this. I have seen... Uh, numerous uh, different videos as far as what is in the catch basin and how it actually moves forward, but you do want the catch basin to be clean as possible. Uh, you do want to take off, like I said, that black hose because a sock could get caught up in there. You could have um, really anything, that just probably anything larger than about that, any smaller than about this size right here will literally get into your unit. Uh, socks, I've uh, underwear, and this is not because you're disgusting, folks. This is just because that's the way these things were designed, and they will get you. Um, and they will not break, but they'll give you this error code, and you have to just clean out the unit. Um, I'm pretty much told that these are supposed to be replaced. I'm sorry, you're supposed to do this every year. I didn't do it in 11 years, so shame on me. But anyway, um, so we will get started, and then the, uh, I'll show you what the old one looked like and how it all worked out throughout the entire uh, process. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we're kind of jumping back into this. Um, I have all of my units actually, or my entire unit has actually been pulled apart. This is a Whirlpool Duet. It's about 11 years old. Um, it's done really fantastic. Um, all things considered, it is a front-loaded machine, so when you're looking for any diff discrepancies uh, between front load and top load, this is a front loader. So there's a might do a video on the seal. I have to replace the seal as well. Um, another thing to do is to kind of keep the unit moving um, and at its optimal conditions. You want to leave this thing open when you're done, and then also leave the uh, the uh, um, unit um, laundry detergent dispenser also in there as well. Leave it open for, for airing. But while you guys are all here, um, here's the, the actual motor component. It's always surprising to me how complicated and expensive these, or uncomplicated um, these machines are also with your, how expensive it is as well. So you actually have your motor and then you also have your electrical, your um, uh, motherboard or control board and things of that nature. Uh, basically, that's it down here. Now the pump itself that we'll be replacing actually looks like this, and then my other video showed how destructive it was as far as um, how, how catastrophic anything was with, with regards to the pump itself. Uh, this is obviously in fantastic shape. Got it on Amazon, no big deal. And we shall be starting to move forward here. Okay, so with any of the hose materials that are actually going back here, the pump does run uh, in the back, and you actually will see two different openings. This is for the a large black hose that actually comes off of the off, out of the bottom of the unit, so it actually has its, its actual area here. Um, this is we're going to actually, from a best practices perspective, uh, most of your uh, experts are going to say just wet this and we're going to try to wet it so I can eliminate that but I did buy some waterproof grease that will actually come through here as far as the actual tubing itself 
you want to disconnect it. And this, this ball in here is actually a, a stopper ball. So actually when the drain is actually occurring, you won't get any backflow um, clampings. All right, so the unit itself is actually sitting there. It's very simple how to do this, everybody. It's literally just there's some cumbersome pieces here that are um, you know part of the what I believe is the 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 difficult nature of this. But you can actually see that the three pieces that or the, the three uh, parts actually are a slide format, so they actually slide into these grooves. These grooves right here are. Uh, are pretty much built to just slide in easily. I'm gonna make you guys stop here. You know, obviously, if you haven't unplugged your unit, you're crazy, but um, make sure you're unplugging the unit before you reattach anything. These, uh, these areas here are um, very, very simple to actually get in. I use this shop vac, okay? The shop vac itself was to um, make sure there wasn't any residual water or anything. I like to go after a while and make sure that everything is dry before I put any new unit, new uh, products and or any new pumps or any new parts into the unit itself. The, if you, are, when you're taking the old unit out, it is actually, you release a kind of black footing. You can actually see here, this black footing is actually something that's very uh, easy to, to get, basically just take a screwdriver underneath and don't pin, you know puncture anything, but it is the old unit. So if you're trying to verify whether or not your uh, pump is good or not, you obviously don't want to rupture anything, but you lift that off and it actually slides into the unit. And then you just basically slide to the left. And then this actually just, you can actually see how it's almost like a, like a, almost like a blunt arrowhead type of a slide that slides back into those, into that area itself. Um, from a hand perspective, you probably are going to want to wear some sort of mechanics gloves. There are some sharp things back here. Um, I'm going to put the black unit on uh, and clamp it down, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we actually are moving it back in. But I don't want to try to have to clamp that, that together and then try to clamp it forward. So anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so we tried the water with the black hose. The black hose... Um, the water is a no-go. Literally, as fast as you put the water on here, it basically dries unless it falls down into the actual areas and in, into the rivets there. Where this plastic piece has got to uh, meet up with that. So, I kind of anticipated that. I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on that. One thing I do want to say is, is that if, you use a, if you're use if you using one of these uh, pinch clamp um, or <clears throat> I, I don't think this is actually called a pinch clamp. Uh, but it is in a kind of an adjustable pinch clamp, I guess, or a squeeze pinch or something of that nature. Good luck finding them. They're uh, fun to find. Um, as a matter of fact, if it doesn't work, I'm going to probably go to more of a screw-based clamp so I can actually uh, ensure the tightness on the reseal. Still a little bit of water in there just because it seeps down in there so well, which seems like it'd be a good thing, but unfortunately it's not. So I'm going with a waterproof grease um stuff is amazing it's good for showers and everything else i probably need to get some way to get this video sponsored somehow on this waterproof grease but that's what we're going to try to go with it comes with a little cap you just pinch the thing off and then we're going to actually apply that grease into the grooves which should give me a much easier way to do this without trying to tear up my hands and i think it's actually going to give me a better seal on the unit itself so um Oh, the only other thing is if you have this clamp, these hoses actually kind of give you almost a directional unit. There's actually like a black uh, notch at the end, at the top there. The clamp itself has got the middle of this clamp right in here, right? This middle part right here has to be moved all the way up in here. But for the sake of my hands, I'm actually going to start it here. So once I can get the actual uh, hose into the actual uh, plastic uh, male par portion of the underside of the tub or the drum, um, I should be able to uh, maneuver this over to the other side, or at least that's in theory what's about to happen. I knew this was going to be the biggest problem out of all this stuff, so you do have to take this off. You do have to clean it out, especially if your unit's as old as mine. 
it takes a while. I had my wife uh, clean it. I clean it. We soaked it. It's the whole thing. It's in remarkably good shape, but you don't want to you don't want to cut it or uh, snag it. So be careful. We used a, uh, a very simple brush from one of the kids. You know that they actually um, used to paint when they were kids. They're no longer kids anymore, but. Um, it was still lying around with all the art stuff, so that kind of works in some of these nooks and crannies too. The smell is incredibly bad in the beginning, and then um, once you get it done, it kind of it almost smells like detergent, which I think is where most of this stuff is going. So, waterproof grease is the way I'm going to go here. Um, after that, this should be a pretty simple job, but once that's done. Uh, just don't let don't let the guys, the YouTube guys, show you that this is a simple process to pull this thing on and off. You will need tools. I don't have pliers that can get around this thing. Um, they're about thirty five dollars, and I wasn't really going to go buy pliers that large for that. I have every other type of plier there is, um, and of course vice grips and rigids and all different kinds of things that were all basically kinds of adjustable pieces here that we can actually go with. But anyway. Just want to let you know that this notch has got to be pointing at the back so it actually kind of looks like this so it'll actually come back in so the notch is right there and then pointing it backwards to move it up there and as long as it looks like that then it should come in because then you can actually see it aiming right at the uh the pump itself into the into the catch basin for all debris and things of this nature because you will find socks and coins and all kinds of fun stuff in this thing. So that's where we're going. After that, we should be good to go. You should see a lot more success here, guys, but um, wanted to show you some of the places that were some real nasty bits as far as difficulty. But otherwise, if you can get around this part, it's a pretty simple deal. Okay, so... Feel a lot better about this. Um, we actually have the um, male side of the drum that's going to go into the um, hose itself, the black hose here. Uh, we have it sufficiently lubricated now with the waterproof grease, feeling a lot more uh, confident this is actually gonna go on. Um, it actually holds its lubrication. Quite viscous, um, so expect that to be a little bit um, but pretty typical as far as everything else. Just want to keep it on the seal. You don't want it to really kind of get around in any kind of um, nature that's going to be bad. But from a clean perspective, you certainly want to try to clean this as much as you can because you will be sticking your finger down into these, into that little groove here that actually kind of flips up. I'll try to show it to you. Um, kind of like opens up a little bit like that. And that's where the grooves are going to go into. So that's where we're going. Feeling pretty good about it so far. Hoping that that's not going to be too much of a problem. Otherwise, I got to go back to Lowe's and get some pliers that are the size of my kid's head. So anyway, I shall see you guys in a little bit. All right, so we're back. If you have the black hose on this Whirlpool Duet and you're switching out the pump, you most likely have pulled out this black hose here. So I'm back. Um... This clamp is a real pain in the neck, and uh, you will need pliers. Uh, the YouTube people say pliers, not just regular pliers, like big old borrow it from your father-in-law, got tape on them things, because they are legit, and you need these things. So uh, you wanna take this actual, this is actually connected to this piece here. So this actually clamps onto the unit itself, which is actually what actually goes through in, in my earlier video, uh, part of the video, it actually showed how it was on there. So I've now taken this thing off and I've greased it with this whole thing. Uh, and in order to get it back on again, I'm going to now put this onto the male portion of the drum and then um, we'll get back and see that. But I wanted to show you that you do have to grease it. Um, you do have to remove the clamp completely do not use your thumb to do this. Use mechanics gloves, um, any of those things like this. Otherwise, you're going to rip off your thumbs. And uh, I'm not a professional at this, but I am a professional at my appliances. And um, my appliances are pain in the necks. So that's the, my best advice to you 
is to find something like this, borrow it, buy it, whatever you got to do with it. So I will be back and hopefully this black hose will be onto the unit. Okay, so we've got our pump all nice and secure up there. It is about as on as it can get um, in the right place directionally. We're sitting there, you know, in this whole thing. Like I said, this is by far the hardest thing that you guys are going to have to do with this um, pump replacement or drain pump replacement. Uh, these are a pain in the neck, folks. Uh, but you do want to ensure that there's nothing stuck in here before you put a brand new uh, pump on here. Or it's just going to screw up the propeller or the impeller um, that's actually pushing the, the water that drains out of the tub, out of the drum, and down into the drain hose and into the pump and then uh, it clogs the filter and then the pump itself shoots back up into that whole thing and if there's something stuck in here and it could be a sock it could be coins it could be really anything folks um, I found in my propeller um, and my actual the, the within impeding the actual uh, magnetism itself uh, probably 11 years worth of sand from baseball sand from when my kids were playing baseball. So that's back on. This is going to be easy squeezy. So the next time you'll see this, I'm going to be actually putting the pump in, um, into this and moving forward. You're going to see pieces of the actual um, uh, drum housing. <clears throat> this is normal. This is just part because it starts to shake but uh, it's kind of almost like a concrete ceramic. You'll see little pieces of it kind of chip off. Take a shot back and that should take care of you, so. All right, so we're back in the game, folks. See you in just- Okay, guys, real quick. Uh, I've put some waterproof grease on these uh, little prongs, especially this little prong here. Um, it also is gonna mate into this guy right here um, because it is extremely tight, but it is not supposed to be forced, so it should just slide in. Again, I can't stress waterproof grease as pretty much uh, an incredible product. Um, again, plumber grade. I don't want to hear any people talking about how you shouldn't use uh, waterproof grease. I've used it for years, and it is wonderful. So um, use that, please. Uh, do not force this into the unit because it will just slide right on in into those three, into those prongs, okay? So if it's not sliding in, that means the rubber is too dry. Um, I'm doing this in winter. There is almost no humidity in the air. It is extremely dry. The rubber itself is like um, um, almost too hard to even uh, maneuver. So a little bit of waterproof grease, and I'm talking about extremely small amounts. You can't even really tell, except for my uh, fingerprints have kind of moved some of the debris, but that's it. Just enough to get it to slide in. So I just want to let you guys know, and I think I've already posted this on here, but it's just straight on waterproof grease. Um, again, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic stuff. Anyway, just want to let you guys know. All right. So a little bit of waterproof grease. This thing seated absolutely perfectly. It should be a snug fit. You should not be able to move it side by side. It should be snug. You should have your notches here. It should be meeting up with those, uh, just like this. You should have all of these different pieces that are available to you from a uh, electrical standpoint. Uh, the hose should be basically almost wanting to marry into that. Um, of course, my um, drain hose that actually exits the unit is still we're still at that next piece, which is going to go up this um, right side of the unit. And then uh, we shall uh, just start clamping things back together. And then uh, we'll give it the old good, you know, good to go here. So make sure that we pin these back in, of course, because I don't want a lot of vibration. But this was one of the newer units. But I think that the actual, some of the newer Kenmore's Whirlpools, um, <clears throat> Sears products are uh, uh, actually doing without this whole scenario, so you should be pretty much ready to go. 
Okay guys, so we are gonna go ahead and start clamping back up. See you in a bit. So we are in like Flint. We are doing fantastic here. Uh, we've got the back hose all clamped in. We have a pinch clamp here. So the one thing, if you guys have the pinch clamp like I do, you need a tool called a uh, pinch clamp. Oh! Poly pipe pinch clamp tool. Looks like this. And it actually up, and then you just flip this down, and it should step, just sit in there like that. You don't have to force anything in here, guys. If it doesn't go in easy, then you just need to stop, or you're gonna break it. It's all plastic, so lovely plastic. Um, ensure that everything, as far as because we walked away from this for a little bit, uh, ensure that everything is the way you want, want it, nice and tight. You've got everything pinched, you've got everything crimped, everything the way you want it. That's in there, that's in there. We have power to the unit. Um, so we're good to go. It actually pinches that little unit right there, a little metal thing right in there, you pinch it in there. My advice to you is to pinch that so you run the drain hose down before you anchor this, because I had to pull it out again. You have to pull it all out again, bring it out here so you can actually get the tool underneath the housing and the uh, the drum itself, because it won't you won't actually fit it in there. So you actually want to do that first. So don't do do the um, external drain hose first, and then um, pinch the pinch the uh, metal piece down, uh, pinch clamp, and then do the black hose, okay? Um, but that's pretty much the way it's gonna look, guys. This, of course, is all the way at the top, so I'll go ahead and show you that. Now here, so you actually have the external drain hose in here. This black tube right here is actually very important it's actually a black tube that goes right in there. I don't know if you can see it. It goes into that right there. That shoots down also down into it. That's also part of the pump itself. Um, told these parts can be faulty as well, but that would be a different code and we're working on F21 right now. Um, but that could also be a piece of the actual washer itself that goes bad. And then you actually have to come in there. Things are not expensive either. I haven't priced them out, but venture to say they're not that bad either. Um, as far as your external drain hose, clean that out as much as you can. Just, I took a, another, again, the, my kid's brush. And uh, I also put bleach down in this. Um, almost impossible to get really clean because it's just sitting kind of in a curve. Um, you can also throw some bleach down into this area as well. Uh, it's almost impossible to keep clean back here because of the dryer units as far as that's concerned. Um, dryer is going to put out some lint, so they're going to be fighting both of them. You're going to want to put the, obviously, <clears throat> we'll talk about, um, this is, <laughs> this is not the washer. This is, uh, my shop vac, so, uh, always unplug everything. Turn off your, um, hot and cold water, please. It's very important that you do so. Otherwise, I think we're getting to the end here, folks, to see if our F21 is done and all fixed. So we shall see you guys in a moment. All right, so now we're gonna put this thing back together again. I told you that this was part of the, the little uh, piece that kind of gives you a little more working room. So you wanna, you wanna put those back in. It should not be too difficult. Just pinch them back in. Make sure this pinch back in. So that's all nice and tight again. Ensure that your grounds are all nice and... and always, whenever you pull the, the front panel off of this, there are three screws in this front panel. I don't know if I said that in the beginning. <clears throat> we'll go back and uh, make sure that everybody knows how to take the panels off. Mine's actually on the on a um, on a shelf itself, so that can actually come through. So 
you just want to make sure that everything is the way it should be. This, of course, is the most important piece as far as the electrical side, so that's going to go ahead and be put in there too. Um, so I'll see you in a second because I don't, I don't think I can put this in and hold this phone. All right, let's see if we get an F21. Wait until it starts rinsing, and then when it starts the drain cycle, let's see if we can see what's going on. So we're about 12 minutes into a quick wash. I think there's a diagnostic setting and stuff, but we're already on the rinse, so we should be getting close to a spin point. Um, thinking that uh, we're just basically looking to be looking for any kind of any codes or anything like this. But we're going to start to spin here, which is the uh, drain and spin uh, portion of this here, probably in the next minute or so. So far, so good. I'm alarmed with how quiet the washer is. The washer hasn't been this quiet in years. So I'm not seeing any any real issues, no leaks, everything's going to make the same gurgling noises that you want to hear. Um, actually sounds quite dynamic and solid. Like I said, I'm just going to, there's no clothes in here or anything like this, but I think we're going to start getting a little faster here. We'll come back here in a second. No F21s yet. So we're uh, looking pretty good. See you in a second. Checking back in. Three minutes to go. On a quick wash. Gone through all the cycles. Spinning like it's never spun before. I don't know what's going on. Probably because it's not hampered by 87 gallons of water. We have zero leaks, which is what we're basically I'm looking for right now. Feeling nothing. I'm going to pull this apart too. But this is the big indicator right here. That our pump is working. And you can see actually differences in the water so the actual condensation is coming out plus the sun there's no smell anymore i was smelling burnt hair burnt rubber almost like a melted battery which is what my uh, the uh, pump itself was really suffering and we're getting nothing but good stuff here not no 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 leaks no nothing And more importantly, no F21, which at this point, I never would finish the cycle. It would spin and spin and spin, and then it would just make this terrible noise, like a like a sputtering metallic kind of a grind or an engine that can't start. But we're getting, you guys can probably hear, the fact that you can hear me, really amazing. So, uh, more importantly, the drum is, is draining. So, we're doing really well, folks. So, uh, after this, 
about a minute left, going through all of its cycles. This thing hadn't gone through a cycle in about a week. Ding dong, no F21. So we are good to go. So I'm going to make sure that there are no leaks in my work. And I will, uh, I can smell the water that went through it, which all actually smells really good. Just kind of smells a little like you ran the faucet, which is good. So everything is good here. We are done with no signal, no F21. So I'm gonna check back in a second and we'll conclude this. So dry as a bone, folks, dry as a bone. Took everything off of here, took the paneling off, three screws, it just three screws, two, three. Dry as a bone, folks. All our seals look good, no shimmies, no change. how you do it. Drain hose looks like it's perfect. No, no water there, no water there. Really you're just looking for leaks. I don't see anything. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did because now I don't, I'm in it for I spent, uh, let's see, I spent $28 for the new pump, or sorry, the new pump it's, itself. The whole piece came together. is $27 on Amazon. I'm told that you only get about three years out of this, but um, it looks identical to mine, my old one. So truth be told, I think I'm, I think I'm doing great. I don't I think I have any problems, nothing to worry about. Um, the... Uh, I also bought a uh, pipe <clears throat> clamp. That, so that was about 13 bucks. So 30 and 13. <laughs> I'm now in it for about well 28 and 13. So I'm about 41 <laughs> and change. You know, give or take. And uh, you know, Saturday I pulled everything apart cleaned everything out so I did lose a weekend but uh in one week uh, Amazon was able to get it in uh pretty quickly I'm a prime member so that worked out well so we're good to go um so probably just under 50 bucks I was able to get all this thing done um yeah sounds good all right well, I'm going to give a thumbs up on the, uh, on the pump here. Um, I'll write a review on Amazon as well, but hope you guys at least learn something about this black pump because that thing's a pain in the butt um, and then everything else. So, all right, guys, take care.